I'm Kayla Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. When I look back at Karen and Alex's book, there are some ways in which I did really well, and there are some ways in which I did not so well. Some of those are the practical mechanics. That fucking cat. <laughs> now, some of those are the practical mechanical parts of writing. Some of those are not setting myself up for success when I was outlining my book in all the ways that I could have. Some of it was about learning how to revise more efficiently and effectively. And some of them ended up being kind of like psychological. See, I'm really lucky because in Meatspace, IRL, my closest group of friends are all authors, like published authors who have book deals and who have agents and who have been through the process no. of- What? That cat. Do you want out or do you still want to be nasty? In my real life, in meat space, my closest friends are published authors, like women with book deals and agents and real physical books out in the world. And they know how to do what I want to do because they've already done it, because they have experience and expertise and they have excellent advice to give me and insider baseball to share. And I am so lucky to be able to take advantage of that. But I'm also unlucky because my closest friends in real life are published authors, women with book deals and agents who know what they're doing and who can offer me great advice. And because they love me and they want to see me succeed, they will. And they will likely be the first people who read my book. They will read my first chapters for me and they will try to help me make it as good as it can be because they care about me. Except, um, they're all YA or middle grade authors and I'm out here writing like shapeshifter dick. So they're not exactly my target audience. I've had this conversation with my friend Megan who I met through fandom and we've talked about versions of it a number of times. That idea of being like far too aware of what comes after the writing, far too aware that someday someone is going to read this and you can't really control what your audience thinks. And some of that just comes from knowing that fandom is bat crap crazy, or knowing that YA Twitter is unhinged, or just that the people who love you and who want to see you succeed and who will want to be the first passes on your work are not your target audience and aren't necessarily going to get it. I spent a lot of Karen Alex's book writing with those worries in the room with me and it made me second guess myself and question my instincts and the kind of book that I was writing. I closed my window so if I overheat and die it's my loud neighbor's fault. But Karen Alex's book was never supposed to be some ultra salacious, questionably problematic smut fest to terrify the faint of heart. But it was supposed to be like a trashy, self-indulgent, shapeshifter romance novel. And I'm a grown ass woman, I can admit that some of the tropes that I like best in those genres don't necessarily translate well outside of the genre. And because I knew that the first eyes on those pages were going to be people who didn't necessarily read romance, period, much less the trashy, self-indulgent, over-the-top paranormals that I'm most fond of, I ended up scaling a lot of it back. And that's a me problem, not a them problem. They have never once said that I should scale back anything I'm writing or made any comments about it whatsoever. I sort of declawed myself and I think that the sex and sexual tension between Karen and Alex really suffered for it, which is a huge problem in a romance novel. I ended up really preoccupied with trying to make sure that Alex came across to every reader as someone who was a genuinely good guy and like deserved to be with Kara by virtue of being unproblematic, rather than focusing on making him interesting or making sure that the dynamic between them was something that I liked and wanted to write or made sense at all. Which obviously is not to say that in order for your couple to be hot they have to be problematic in some way or even that I wanted Kara and Alex to be problematic in any way. It's just that I was so preoccupied with making sure that he wasn't and making sure that he was like perfectly good and perfectly kind that I made him super boring because like real people are flawed and whatever, I have a villain attraction disorder, I like my dynamic with a little bit of bite and I took that away from them and my book really suffered for it. 
All of which is to say I love my friends, but I need to kick everyone out of the metaphorical room with me when I write my next project. I think the worst part is that they didn't actually say anything. Um, this is all in my head. There's no real evidence to suggest that they would have any problem with anything that I might want to write. It's just that I got in my head about it and I couldn't let myself let it go. I couldn't let myself just write what felt good and natural to me because I was so aware of how people might perceive it based on like just me overthinking everything and I caused myself a bunch of problems which like I do all the time. So <laughs> next book is going to be closed door writing. I actually said to her um, that my next book I am going to write with the mantra of write it for the kink meme. So we'll see how well that goes. Uh, it should be a very different dynamic than second guessing myself on giving Alex a little bite. I can't be worrying about what other people might think of my book before it's even finished. Uh, it's no wonder I could never really get into flow state with Karen Alex's book if I was so preoccupied all the time with not disappointing or upsetting an imaginary audience that didn't even exist. So if I want to be faster as a writer, if I want to be more honest and genuine as a writer and enjoy my products more, I need to be better at just writing for me. I have to be my first audience and I have to be better <laughs> at just letting all of those imaginary voices and imaginary criticisms go and letting myself just write what I love and what I want. Thank you so much for letting me ramble about the ways I do myself a disservice by overthinking everything and stressing about how I might be perceived by people who have never indicated that they would be critical in any way of what I'm doing. We all know by now that I am an overthinker. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you sticking around. If you're looking for me anywhere else, I'm pretty much everywhere as Kayla Amanda. That is K-A-Y-L-U-G-H-M-A-N-D-A. And I will see you next time.